action. Mentally mad. Let's get mental. <laughs> so you get started. And then I'll catch up. Oh, really? Okay, I'll try to give a little more. No, a little less, please. <laughs> oh, that, okay. Um, and I wonder if I can make this a little... While I wait, let me see if I can make this a little clearer on the... More focus? No, I'm just making it worse. Oh. Okay, yeah, I'll back this up a little bit, make it a little larger. Can you see it okay? Okay. So that should have given you time to get a little bit out ahead of me. Um, so the first one we can just look at as 210 dollars plus $35, so it would be $245. Then we are dividing by 10 for this, so that means we will bring our decimal one over to the left. Boinky. So one, then $275. Thousands. I, I thought you had to say like the, I thought you had to say the numbers on the other side of the like one point two seven five. That's more like describing the number. It's almost more like kind of math slang. Oh. Like and that and that does have its uses, but that's not really saying the number. The number is one and two hundred seventy five thousandths. And looking over here, looks like it just goes up by one and a half, or by, by an extra 50%. So then that would make N equals six, if I'm not mistaken. Then for the exponents, this is really a hundred divided by 25, and well, how many quarters are in a dollar, kid? Four. Four. I, did, I put 100, into, 100 over 25, and then I also put four. You're okay. Sure. You could just put four. I mean, I, I show a little bit of extra on here just because I'm kind of trying to show my mental math process. I think yeah, technically, I think you're, uh, you're supposed to do it all in your head. All right. So this is really just 6 times 4 equals 24 because it's estimation, which everyone knows. I, know. I told myself I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget. <laughs> Guess what? I Did you forget not. again? Yes. Someone even blurted it out before we started. Yeah, I did. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It's, it's cool. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. It's kind of funny, though. It's kind of funny to see who... Who gets caught? I think three people this morning got three. But of course, nobody warned them. All right, so then uh, this looks like 30. Then for our range, we would subtract the smallest number from the largest number. So our range would be 70. Then 8 times 10 is 80, plus 1 is 81. The square root would be 9, plus 2 would be 11, times 4 would be 44, minus 2 would be 42, divided by 6 would be 7, times 9. 63 plus 1 64 square root is 8 
divided by two is four. Divided by two is two. Divided by two is one. I know, I know, it's, it's kind of funny. Okay, so remember how people were a little bit insulted by how simple yesterday's lesson was? Today's one, you're going to be even more insulted. What? what? <laughs> Please write seven tenths as a percent. Yeah, I'm sure. It's actually sixth grade math. Yeah. Harder math than this, I would hope. All right, all right. Okay, good talk. So we should get through this pretty quickly. Huh? I'm not good. All right. So um um I'll you know I'll I'll kind of look we'll look at the shortcut. Um we'll look at the way Saxon is presenting it. So um I'm I'm assuming you're solving this faster than me. You're you know, you're not trying to solve it. You're, are you not trying to tell me the answer right? Because I'm assuming everyone can get the answer to this. What's up? I have no idea. Shouldn't this be on the mental map? No. But okay, but please, that's a waste of time. All right. Um, so really, we could just look at this as seven tenths, and then um, to you know to get a percent, you times it by a hundred. Uh, Saxon likes to say times a hundred percent. So you know you can do two jumps to the left, boing, or to the to the right. Excuse me, boingy, boingy. And then, so that would get you seventy percent. However, uh, the way the way Saxon is presenting it, so the Saxon way would be the Saxon the Saxon method here that they're they're going with is seven tenths times one hundred percent, and then uh. Now, they don't do this, but I, I think that this is good for clarity of putting the slash one under it. Um, and so then we would end up at that point. Now, one person in the last class interjected, hey, you can do cross cancel with right? that. And so then I was like, what? You're totally right. You can. Yeah, buddy. And, and so doing that, it's like uh, seven times 10% would get you... Also, seventy percent. Uh, now, okay, following following the Saxon method, though, just straight up following like the, the way the example is presented in the book, you would end up with seven hundred percent divided by ten, which is also basically cross canceling goodness like that. So. So, you know, um, uh, different pathways to the same answer. Is this going to be constructive? Yes. What's up? Can you just add, to, add a zero at the end of the numerator? Sure, sure. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm showing it the way that it is presented in the, in the book. Okay, so writing two-thirds is a percent. So if you want to get out ahead of me on this, but for percentages they don't write a decimal point, right? You just write a fraction for percentages. Yeah, yeah. In, in general, that's a good idea, especially for for one like this, which is going to be a repeat in, because um, I do think that a fraction makes more sense visually than a repeat in. And we'll 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 talk about that. So the way Saxon is presenting this would be two thirds times a hundred percent. And I'm going to add the slash one. Um, thus, thus get that that doesn't help move us forward. Thus, getting us to two. 200% divided by 3 and so you know you could you could you could do that out 
if you really wanted to. But it'll end up looking like like this. Oh no! Now we gotta bring this down. And then, but it's the same thing. And then, oh no! So you know, at at this point, you could realize that you're going to end up with a repeat end and and say you know you could you could say 66 and 6 tenths repeat end but that's kind of awkward so really just taking your two remainder and your three divisor and just saying two and two thirds or six, six, 66 and two thirds excuse me um, is really your most elegant answer. I kind of didn't understand how to get the answer. How to get the answer? Well, uh, you, using using their their method of just saying we're timesing a hundred percent, multiplying by. Excuse me. And, and so that will make us end up with a percentage sign in our answer. It'll carry over into the answer. So two times 100 is 200. So you end up with 200%. And that will be, then three times one is three. So you'll end up with the 300. And this is essentially saying 200 divided by three. And then if you, if you do it out, and just do your remainder as a fraction. I, and I was I was just showing the repeat in to show that it's kind of it can be kind of awkward to do percents with decimals. So a lot of the time, using using the fraction at the end of the percent is a better idea. So what is the question? Yeah, I got it. Now. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, everybody. Right. <laughs> right. Eight tenths as a percent, please. Don't do this to us. I'm doing it. No. You're doing it. Just do it quickly, and then we can get on to other things. All right. Are you already done? You should already be done. So, yep. It is just eight tenths. <laughs> Times one hundred percent. Well, in this case, we don't really need to even do that. It's just boingy boingy is 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 what we got with that. That was so hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, eighty percent. Okay, next. I never knew that. All right, so so so, for this next part, this is for you. Is you should make this diagram, well, di uh, table on. In your notes, and oh, and solve it. Oh, I, oh, now this is this oh, is I think the first time you have you've seen one of these in the book this year, and these will be coming up often in your yeah. classwork and homework. This so is not this that is hard. this is just a, nope. It is not it is not hard. But and that will take a long time. now if you if you would like to just do an F for fraction, so that's what I'm gonna do. D for decimal, and a percent sign. For the percent column, I don't mind, but you should try to copy this table as it is, please. So I will give you a few minutes to finish this, and then we'll check ourselves. Would you have to copy down the chart? Yes, I just said that. Yes, please copy down the chart. I believe there will be ones like this on tests. It's alright. No, it's I'm not, not that hard, right? It's just so okay, okay. I hope it's okay, alright, alright. Okay, we'll let people focus so we can get finished with it.
I'll, I'll assume that I can at least start talking through these answers and that by the time I'm to the end that people have finished. Okay, so this one as a decimal, so one third would be a three tenths repeated. And then the percent would be 30. 3%, 33 and one third percent, I should say. Then, one thing to always remember, simple, important rule, is that if we are converting regular numbers to percents, that a full whole number always means 100%. So, one and five tenths, is 150%. Then if we're looking at fraction, it's one and a half. Then for this, what well, 60% would be six tenths, which as a fraction could be reduced to three fifths. And ho, oh, that's this one's real simple. So I guess I've I've been putting a slash one under things so often that it should be pretty easy for people to remember that this just means a two whole number, which is a decimal is known as a two. <laughs> and then as a percent would be two hundred percent. Every every whole number represents a hundred percent. Okay, and that's today's lesson, people.